talks about a little place called Ai. You remember Ai? You know, we'll be reading in the scriptures today, uh, but just kind of give you the uh, kind of the, the catch up to speed. If you remember, they go out to face. Jericho. And God had given some very strange instructions about how to conquer Jericho. And really the instructions was God's going to do it. And uh, so they go out and, and they march around Jericho and uh, the walls, we think, and the walls came tumbling down. And God had told them Normally, when they would conquer a city, they would take the spoils of the battle. So those who fought would get some of the gold and the silver and the stuff that was there. But God said this, I said, do not take anything for yourself. And anything that is worth anything is going to the Lord. And uh, one person, or only one, took some of the precious things, took them back to his tent and hid them, and uh, nobody knew. And they go out to face Ai a little, man, they, they've just conquered Jericho. Now they're going to get Ai. And they sent spies out. And, and, and the spies go out and, and look, they came in. They said, don't send the whole army. Just send a small contingent over them. They're nothing. We'll, we'll take them easy, no problem. And they go over and Ai sent them running with their tails between their legs. Defeat. Kill a number of them. Caused the rest to, to tremble in fear. You know, we all have AI experiences. If you follow sports, we've all seen a sports team, sometimes be our favorite team, that have gone out and they are playing a very inferior opponent and they're sadly defeated. And we ask, how does that happen? Well, often the preparation was poor. Their mindset was wrong. They started thinking, we're somebody. We're good. We can do this. They're not, you know, when you start underestimating the opponent and overestimating yourself, you're headed for an AI experience. That's what they did. That AI is nothing. We can go out and, and this is going to be easy. And they forgot. And they're thinking, we just, we just defeated Jericho. Well, let's be honest. No, you didn't. God did. And you know it. Now, God can defeat AI, but you can't. You know, the Bible says to us, without faith, it is impossible. impossible to please God. Ponder on that a little bit this afternoon. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Doesn't say that it's hard. Doesn't say that it's difficult. Doesn't say you can kind of do it. Without faith, it's impossible. So, so I need to stop and ask myself the question of me and, and for our church, what are we attempting that can only be accomplished through faith if God shows up? And if you're not attempting something that only God can do, then, man, look for something. Jesus said, without me, you can.
can do nothing. nothing. Doesn't say some things. Doesn't say you can do a little. You know, well, that, you can't do anything. And, and the Israelites forgot that. Somehow between Jericho and Ai, they forgot that it's God that gives the victory. Uh, spiritually, we've all experienced failures that caught us off guard. We would have said a few weeks ago, I will never do X, Y, Z. And then we do it. How does that happen? We're going to learn a little bit of it today. And, and the first point of my message is really to ask, how did this happen? And if you turn your scripture in chapter 7 of Joshua, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. Uh, in chapter 7, verse 2, Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is near beth Aven, east of Bethel, and told them, go up and scout the land. So the men went up and scouted Ai. After returning to Joshua, they reported to him, don't send all the people. Send about two or 3,000 men to attack Ai, since the people of Ai are so few. Don't wear out all our people there. So about 3,000 men went up there, but they fled for the men of Ai. The men of Ai struck down 36 of them and chased them from the outside, from outside the gate to the quarry, striking them down on the descent. As a result, the people's hearts melted and became like water. Now how did that happen? Remember the instructions that God gave every day for six days. Go out and just walk around Jericho. Don't make noise. But just... Then on the seventh day go out March around seven times. <clears throat> and on the last time, blow the trumpets, shout, and the walls are going to fall in. Now, you know, that does not sound to me like proper military uh, plans. I think that's the point to the Israelites. I mean, these walls around Jericho were massive, had never been breached. I mean, it's, but God said, if you'll do this, then the walls will fall in. Maybe they're thinking, we're not going to be able to defeat Jericho, so what do we have to lose? We're going to give this a try. I don't know, but they, but they did what God said, and they went out, and God did exactly what he said he would do and gave the victory. Look at verse 1 of chapter 7. The Israelites, however, were unfaithful regarding the things set apart for destruction. Achan, son of Carmi, son of Zebdi, son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of what was set apart, and the Lord's anger burned against the Israelites. God had said, don't take anything for yourselves. But Achan took some. He's unfaithful for the Lord. You see, you have AI experiences in your life because of disobedience. You know, Achan's sin was not so far out. Matter of fact, he did what was the normal practice. Every other place that we took captive and defeated, 
we took some of the spoils for ourselves. I mean, that was just, that's what we did. Matter of fact, very next time they go out, God said, take some. But this time, God said, no. Don't you know that Achan probably thought, well, I'm just going to take a little bit. I mean, there's a whole pile of gold here. I'm going to take one piece. There's a whole collection of silver here. I'm going to take one piece. There, I, nobody's going to miss it. Nobody's going to know. It's not that much. It's just a little. It's not such a big deal. I mean, think about all the excuses that we make. Trying to excuse sin. You probably will say, Well, I bet others are taking it too. I won't be the only one. I mean, we justify with all these little excuses. The Israelites have become overconfident. Yeah, don't wear, don't wear us. Out. Don't, don't bother us by sending all of us over there. Just send a few. It's just AI. We've got things to do today. Don't make us change our whole schedule to go over to AI. I mean, you know, they're, they're overconfident. You know, the problem was they were self-confident. So we're going to say, what's wrong with self-confidence? Well, self-confidence, if we're not careful, leads us to forgetting about God. And we think, look what I can do. Look what I can do. That, you know, that, that was God's warning to the people. Be careful, lest when you get to the promised land, and you move into houses you didn't build, and you're eating from gardens that you didn't plant, and you're in this land flowing with milk and honey, and you didn't do anything to deserve it, you didn't do anything to get it. Be careful, lest you say, look what we have done. Because when you do that, you're ready for a fall. I've told you before about the miracle that God gave when we were in Wyoming and, and uh, uh, trying to buy some property to build our church. And the property got so late, the city bought our property. That's what I said. It wasn't ours. The city bought the property we had our eye on to build a new jail on. I'll never forget looking on, on a Wednesday, the newspaper came out. I looked at the newspaper and there was our property. Thought, What's our property? doing there and they just closed the deal and I was like I got to church people were disappointed because we hadn't, we hadn't made an offer yet it wasn't our problem it, it was sitting there and it had been sitting there nobody was doing anything with it it would be a great location and a pretty good place to put a jail even a better place to put a church and, and, and we're just uh, and now it's sold we're going to be back to square one and we gathered together, we talked about that, we prayed, you know. Uh, we had just started going through experiencing God. God's always at work around you. See where God's working, join him there, uh, you know. Uh, so we, we talked about some of those principles, but we're still discouraged. As on Wednesday, on Thursday, sitting in my office. Now, you've got to understand what my office was. We're in one big room, so we're in a storefront. And I took the boxes that my books that I had carried my books to Wyoming in, and I turned the boxes sideways and put the books in like shelves. And I made me a cubicle. And that was my office. So I'm sitting in my office. Phone rung. Well, Steve, this is Lou Ann. I still remember her name. This is Lou Ann. I don't know if you remember me. I go out to, uh, I've been a member at, uh, 
South Fork Christian Center. Last week, because we've not had a pastor for over a year, we can't get anybody to come, we've dwindled to almost nothing. Last week, we voted to close the doors to our church. Well, I said, look, I, I'm sorry. She said, well, you know, we, we just don't know what else to do. So we're going to close the doors to our church. Um, you know, because we're a nonprofit, we can't make anything. Nobody can be enriched by selling the property, and we can't sell it and put the money in our own pocket. So we just like to give it away. And we'd like to give it to you. I was trying to be very Baptist. I said, well, that would be fine. I'm glad we didn't have video phones in or she'd have seen me dancing around, had my hands up, shouting, you know. Said, well, that, that, that would be good. And she said, um, we have five acres, auditorium seat of about 125. We've got an education wing. We've got a kitchen. We've got nursery. And it's paid for. And we want to give it to you. Would you like to have it? <laughs> I maintain my Baptistness. I said, well, you know, I can't make that decision for our church. I'll have to talk with the deacons and we'll have to call a business meeting. We'll have to talk to the uh, building and finance committee and... But yes, we want it. <laughs> and they gave it to us. Miracle of all miracles. They had a lawyer to, because, you know, there's stuff with the state that had to be, you have to dissolve this corporation. And, 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 and so they had a lawyer. So we had to get a lawyer. And, and when it got all finished, their lawyer said, I'm not going to charge you. I'm just going to donate my time. Which put our lawyer on the spot. <laughs> I drank coffee with him. I'm glad to see that Bill on the spot. And, and he said, well, I'm going to donate my time. So they gave us the property. Two lawyers donated their time and didn't charge a penny. Tell me that's not God. <laughs> the Sunday before Thanksgiving, we moved in. There's a sound system already there. There's a drum set that we were Baptist. Nobody knew how to play drums. And so we gave that to a Christian band that was just starting up. Um, uh, there was silverware in the drawers Amen. over in the kitchen fellowship hall area. I mean, this was fully stocked. We moved in. And I prayed and prayed and prayed, God, what, should, what do you preach the first time you preach in this place that you've given us? And he gave me that scripture. Be careful. Lest you say, our hands have done this, and you forget God. Because our, we weren't smart enough to do any of that. But God did it. All oh, disobedience comes in in very small ways and incremental things. See, big sins, listen, if you've been saved very long, you see big sins coming. And that doesn't mean that we avoid all of them, but still we see them coming. I mean, you know, Brother David, we know it's not the thing for me and you to go have our staff meeting at a bar somewhere and get drunk. I mean, that's not even a temptation. I don't like it. You don't like it. I mean, that, that's not a problem. You know, that there are big sins that we know. You know, you, you've been a Christian very long. Some of those big, doesn't, they don't even tempt you anymore. Oh, but there are little things, half-truths, and small things, like aching. Nobody will know. 
when they finally go and they, they, they ask Achan if he's one, yes, and they got them buried. They're hit, nobody knew. Watch out for little things. How, how serious is little sin? Without giving all the scriptures this morning, you go back and read the story. Let, let, me, let me tell you two or three things that we know from this story about the seriousness of little sin. Number one, the whole nation of Israel suffered defeat. There have been a lot of churches that have been hurt by one or two people's sin. The cause of Christ has been hurt because of one or two people's bad testimony. Oh, it's just a whole nation's defeat. Aiken, he finally comes clean. Probably thought, oh, okay, well, I'm, I'm busted. Yeah. Take him outside the camp, take him out, and take his life. Oh, it cost a nation, it cost him. No, don't, don't just take Achan. Take Achan and his family. See, our AI experiences, our disobedience, oftentimes cost many other people. It costs our families. See, part of the lie of Satan is, well, if it's wrong, you're only hurting yourself. And that is a lie. I mean, it'd have been bad enough if it cost Aiken, but it cost thousands of people. That's how serious it is. Well, how can you avoid an AI experience? Be obedient to small things. When God says, thou shalt, do it. And when God says, thou shalt not, don't do it. I mean, what's so hard about that? I mean, really. Why is that such a hard thing? You know what, one of the biggest things that got me in trouble when I was a kid growing up at home? You ready? I'm going to bear my soul. And I'm going to let you know what was the number one biggest thing that caused my father to be upset with me. You ready? On Friday afternoon, I did not bring in the trash can. That's not such a big deal, is it? No one's such a big deal. Except every Friday, Daddy told me, bring in the trash can. Now, I came home from school. When I was there, I came home from school. Uh, Mr. Enderman, I came down Texas Road with a whole crowd. I thought about that the other day as I was leaving Kavanaugh School. How many, so many times we'd go over to Dodson's store. Listen, you'd go over there and you could buy, you, you could buy an ice cold Shasta Cola for about 15 cents. You could buy one that wasn't cold for 10 cents. And so sometimes I'd get the not cold one because it was cheaper. Or you'd get a fudge sickle. Man, I, I still like me a fudge sickle. That's my, that's my favorite out of the ice cream box. Be a foot. We'd do that, and then we a whole group of us of all ages would, like a big amoeba, we'd 
go down Texas Road. No sidewalk or what we just kind of, you know, and, and we get down, and, and a bunch of us would, when we got down to it, would turn on hillside, and then some of them, they, they, they'd go up uh, 10th Street, 9th Street, 8th Street. They'd go on up to Cedar Lane, where, where the Needles lived, and, and, and it, they'd go up to well, Short Night, where the Weavers lived, and, and, and you know, they, they, so, so, I, so I'd go home, I'd come down hillside, I'd get to 700 Hillside, that's where I lived, and I'd turn in. I, I wouldn't turn in too quick, because that would mean I'd have gone across Mr. Morrison's yard, and he did not allow children walking across his yard. And, and so and so most days, I would avoid his yard, so I'd get to the light pole, and I'd turn around the light pole, and, and I'd, I'd make, walk by the trash can. Probably had to go around it. There's a trash can in my way. Now, what had my daddy said? When you come home, bring in the trash can. I don't know why that was such a hard thing. And I really intended to. And man, many times I'd, get, I'd be in there, I'd be in my room at, at about right before supper time, and daddy would drive up, and I'd think, uh-oh. And I'd hear clank as Daddy picking up the trash can, picking up the lid. Clank. I think, oh crud. <laughs> Daddy only gave me one command all week long. Command. Bring in the trash can. <laughs> I didn't know what he might do. But I knew anything he did, I deserved. Because, I mean, it was, it was easy. It, it, it. Folks, listen. Be faithful in the small thing. Some of the things that God tells you to do or tells you not to do, you, you may think, well, that's not so important. Why, why, did, why did I zone out on that? You know, if, if Daddy's instruction had a been, you know, we're taking a trip to, to the country tomorrow. When you come home, uh, wash your mama's car. Man, that's a big, I'd have probably done that. I'd been out there in the hot sunshine, I'd have soaked it up, I'd have washed, I'd have scrubbed the white walls, and, 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 and man, listen, what, that's a big job, that was important. Well, that's good that you do important things. When you come home, mow the yard. Okay. Go out and get that. Remember push mowers? Get it started. I'd have done that. But no. Bring in the trash. See, that, that, that was such a small and significant thing that it wasn't even on my radar. And went, whoosh. Well, there are a whole lot of things that God expects of us that are so small in our eyes that we don't think anything about. It's not like we set a plan. I didn't, I didn't plan all day. Here's how I'm going to avoid the trash can. Every now and then I'd come home, the trash can would be laying down. And I'd set it up. <laughs> Pick up the lid. I'll come back and get you later. Well, that, that's such a little... See, that's how we are. I mean, that, that's how we are about being disobedient. Well, I know the speed limit's 40, but I'm only doing 45. Hey, you ever seen Andy Griffith? Barney will tell you, if you give them 30, they'll take 35. If you give them 35, they'll go 40. If you give them 40, they'll go 45. Why would I? Yeah, I know that's 
there and says, stop, but I slowed down. You know, they'll give you a ticket for that. I got a ticket for that one day. That officer told me, he said, Mr. Young, that sign said stop. It didn't say do's. <laughs> and you do's. I thought, well, I was looking both ways while I was oozing. <laughs> cost just as much. If I'd have just ran it, it wouldn't have cost me any more than oozing. That's how we are spiritually. Well, it's not such a big deal. Be obedient to small things. Before you choose to sin, and sin is a choice. Before you choose to sin, count the cost. What's this going to cost me? What's this going to cost others? What might this cost my family? When I was at Bluff Avenue, one of my deacons was Charlie Vaughn. Charlie was a, a, a neat guy. He had this real rough, gruff exterior. When he growled, you cowered. And he growled a lot. Except you found out that his heart was as big as he was. I remember his testimony about quitting smoking. One of his grandkids, hey dude, that's what they called him. One of his grandkids was in the hospital in Oklahoma City and was sick and and it was serious, 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 serious. And Brother Charlie went down and found the chapel and was in the chapel praying for his grandkid. And he said, I was, he said, I was doing, doing serious business with God. He said, I asked God, God, is there anything in my life that I need to get out? Just tell me and I'll do it. And he said, God went, get rid of those cigarettes. And he said, Brother Steve, I quit. That moment, he said, I've never smoked again. And he said, one of the things that helped motivate me when I would get to want one real, real, real bad. He said, see, I, he said, I told God, I'll quit smoking if you'll save my grandson's life. He said, and guess what? My grandson lived. And he said, I don't really understand and know what I think about making deals with God. And all that. You know, we can talk about that. He said, but every time that I wanted another cigarette. He said, I remembered my promise to God. And he said, I was scared for my grandson's life. If I'm disobedient, God may take his hand away. And he, he told me, he said, he said, I'm not even sure that that's something that God would have done. He said, but I wasn't going to find out. Before you choose to sin, check the cost. Are you willing to pay the price? Oh, we all have these AI moments, usually over little things that cause big disasters. Well, what about when we've had one? We fail. What do we do? Repent and return to God? Are there consequences? Uh-huh. Achan stood and confessed. Cost him his life still. Listen, I, I don't know what God, I don't know what the consequences are, but you know, just because you tell God, God, I'm sorry, doesn't mean that the consequences go away. <coughs> Consequences. Yeah. Oh, but if you fail, find God's 
much forgiveness so that you can stand before God and say, with Job, Amen. even if you kill me, Amen. I'll still serve and love you. Amen. Oh, it's an AI. See, you've got stuff, I've got stuff that we think, ah, oh, that, that's not such a big deal. I can handle that. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe not. Yeah, I know God said don't do that, but the most dangerous word you'll ever say is if you say, God said this, but. No. And that's a dangerous thing. I've had people sit in my office and, and, and ask for some advice, and I've given them what, what the Bible says, and I have had them say, I know that's what the Bible says, but this is what I'm going to do. And I want you to know, when that, when that is spoken in my presence, it gives me holy chill bones up and down my spine. What a dangerous thing to say, I know what God said, but this is what I'm going to do. Ooh. You're setting yourself up for AI. I said this didn't have anything to do with artificial intelligence, but maybe it does. Uh, somebody that will say, I know what God says, but they have artificial intelligence. They have intelligence that's not real. In other words, they don't have any intelligence. They're dumb. Is that clear? Don't have those experiences. Be obedient. Serving. We're, man, our Sunday school lesson this morning was about loyalty. Lost characteristic. Loyalty. Oh, Scott, my, my grandpa would not even look at the vehicles on the Ford lot because he was a shivvy man. You could have bought the most expensive Ford that they made and he wouldn't have been impressed at all. What? Loyalty. My daddy owned a service station uh, when I was a little bitty kid, an Esso station, now Exxon. Esso, Standard Oil, an S and an O. Esso, did you know that? See, you learned something today. That, that's where Esso came from, Standard Oil. So anyway, so he owned an Esso station. This was a time when there were people, they were Esso customers, or they were Gulf customers, or they were tech Texaco customers, they were Philip 66 customers, they were Sinclair customers. I used to love Sinclair because they had the dinosaur. You know, I, but they were loyal. There were people who would say sometimes to somebody, well, you know, that gas at the Esso station is two cents higher than the Gulf, so I'm an Esso person. Loyal. And look, and it came back. It came back to you. Listen, businesses used to be loyal to their employees. Employees used to be loyal to their employer. I mean, it was it was a two way street. Loyalty. How's your loyalty with God? Can't serve two masters. You can't. You know, you, there's no such thing as being halfway loyal. It's kind of like being kind of faithful. Have you been faithful to your husband? Have you, in fact, been faithful to your wife? Well, kind of. Yeah, try that one on. Well, there's no such thing as kind of. Did you bring the trash cans in? Well, sort of. No, either you did or you didn't. Well, I set it up. That, that wasn't. Be faithful to the little things. Be loyal to the Lord. 
building him. Some of the little places like Ai cause great hurt to us and the people we love. It could have all been avoided by just being obedient to the clear thing that God has said. Lord Jesus, I pray. God, first of all, I thank you that you love us. Lord, I thank you that just like you did the people at Jericho, you've chosen to, to fight our battles for us and will listen to you and to give us victory. As I shared with the young ones today, like that glove can do whatever the hand does. God, if we're faithful to you, we can do what you're doing through us. God, without you, we can't do anything. Lord, help us to be faithful to you, to count the cost and be obedient. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You join me.